Underneath every on-site rainbow, there is a big drum of copper. It's hard to not get lost in the, the prettiness and the shininess, just knowing that you could just scrap her in. But today, we're gonna be welding her. using exothermic welding at all it's better than crimping it maintains its conductivity for a longer period of time and it's more durable underground so what is exothermic welding well it's using thermite and thermite is basically just a composition of a metal powder and a metal oxide for this case we'll be using a mixture of aluminium and copper and the rest of the secret recipe of 11 herbs and spices you can see on the screen so the footage I'm playing you now is some lads do a demonstration on thermite welding on a piece of railroad track. This is the standard way they do this out in the field for a very long time. It's tried and tested method and you don't need any big amounts of power out there with you. Just the gear that you have on hand and you're off and it produces results. So back in the day you'd have to use a flint gun starter. But these days we have these electric charge starters which are a lot easier, more convenient and just another way for old Erico to sell you more gear. So your thermite mix, which is mainly just aluminium dust and copper oxides, already comes pre-made in a perfect size for the mould that you're using. You used to get little packets and you would pour them into the mould yourself and get the right amount, little one shots or you know, just different stuff. These days, heaps easier. Just plug it in the mold, set her off, she goes. So the molds that we use are made of graphite, which is a decent material for what it's doing. Although it's essentially a big pencil and will leave marks absolutely everywhere. And it's only good for, on average, about 50 charges. You have to swap these out every 50 goes. This mold here is just for a T-piece join, one continuous earth joining up to one earth, or three earths joining up to each other. And it's really easy to see the path that the, the thermite takes as it goes down and how it ends up and how the mold takes form. Uh, these holes you can block with putty or the cable just does it itself. So I'm going to pause this vid and give a shout out to Safe Style. Finally a bit of style on site that is still safety conscious and safety rated. I've been personally running these for a long time now and I'm starting to see a lot of other people run them. And why wouldn't you? It's a small business run by an ex trader himself and it's just awesome to see someone out there making a cool product and making it well. They're so nice, they made a sticker on my fridge twice. And once you chip the top off, all the slag's gone, this is what you're left with. While the thermite's pouring, if you will, down the mould, all the slag normally floats to the top, and you're left with a decent weld. These are the wild overkill welding blankets they want us to use. These can, these retail for a couple hundred bucks. They can withhold temperatures up to 1100 degrees C, continuous operating temperature which is just over the melting point of copper itself which is I think 1180 so extremely hot they're like a soft almost feel like a silk blanket they don't last long and they're extremely expensive but the Cadwell does burn off at about 1400 C so it's nice to have a little bit of extra in case something goes horribly wrong Let's have a go at burning some holes in this blanket, eh? So this mold is pretty much the same as the one you've already seen for the 120 Earth T joins. 
but this one's made for rebar, slightly different barrel hole size, same thing. There is a little bit of slop in this, so we're just adding some putty real quick. It only takes between 15 to 20 seconds for this to be rock solid hard. Um, you don't want to be touching it anytime soon, but as far as strength goes, it's pretty quick. As you can see here, it came out quite nice. Uh, once you chip the slag off, perfect, perfect joint. This is what a mold looks like when it's all stuffed out. It starts to get those old man lips looking, wrinkles on it and you start getting chips and breaks away. There's no point using this. It just comes out terrible every time. No good. This mold here is one of my favorite molds. It's for joining earth cables straight vertically to steel. This is made for a 120 earth cable and this will actually penetrate and bond to a steel beam. So this mold actually comes with a handy little template. You throw it on the beam, you mark it out, and you know exactly where you need to scratch all the paint from. Keeping in mind that it will get really hot and you're gonna end up with some burnt paint either on the sides, the back, or around the mold anyway, but you want a clean connection. So something I haven't talked about yet is the importance of preheating when you're doing all this stuff. You need to make sure the mold is preheated, you need to preheat the cable, you need to preheat the metal surface if you're going to metal. If you're just doing copper into a mold, you've got to preheat the copper and the mold. Any moisture, anything too cold, you're going to stuff it up. And once you stuff it up, it's a lot harder than doing it right the first time. This stuff cures hard and Taking a grinder to it is not as easy as it would be mild steel. I'd rather cut this beam up than grind off the weld. I always find it a bit of shame chipping the top part of slag off because I like the way it looks all formed the mold perfectly and stuff. But you do got to get it off just so you can check that the it worked out. Like if you can see any copper strands or if there's too much excess slag or anything like that, you know it's a bad weld. But all in all, I do like chipping slag. This is a little shield system we whipped up. Uh, it's just better than wood. Wood catches on fire a lot when you're doing this thing. It just brings the smoke up, out and away and just stops all the, the gunky, sticky stuff from sticking to the beam or whatever you're working on and giving you a harder job cleaning up. And if you ever want to know how good the connection actually is, I grabbed out the duct tester and this one came up 19.2 micro ohms, which is absolutely nothing. If you made it this far in the video, first off, cheers mate, thanks for watching, appreciate ya. Do. Drop us a comment, anything, what you like, what you didn't like, any questions, what did I do wrong, anything, just let's start a combo. Catch ya.